Okay, so continuing on uh, on page number three is number 25. So do not distract others by talking or taking actions that would cause them to make an incorrect or dangerous move. The operator is the only person to be touching the machine while it's being operated. So this is another kind of key safety feature is that when you're on a machine, you're the only one touching it, operating, moving the controls. Um, it's very rare, if ever, you would have another person help you by using one of the other controls. So really important as you're a, a student that you don't operate a machine for someone else or while someone else is operating. Uh, for example, don't turn the machine on or off for the operator. Don't leave your machine running unless you're in close proximity. So um, when your spindle's running, you won't always be the closest person to the spindle. So um, if I need to turn here and get something from the bench, that's fine. But if I need to, you know, walk over the toolbox and I have someone else closer, um, I want to just make sure I reach up and turn the spindle off. Obviously, if you leave to use the restroom or wash your hands or do some other function, we want to always make sure the spindle's off. Make sure that um, it's also turned off when you're making any change to the setup uh, or you're doing any inspection. Number 30, all gear adjustments for the spindle must be made with the spindle at a dead stop. So this on the mill, this is the high-low gear lever on the right side of the head. And in the front here, this is the dial for the speed control. So this is a lever, this is a dial. Um, when I'm turning a lever, the spindle is always going to be off. When I'm turning a dial, the spindle is always going to be on. Okay? Um, and when I rotate and go from, actually when I go from low to high, so now it's in low, to go from low to high, I might need to rotate the spindle by hand to make sure that this lever is in fully engaged in low. The same on the lathes. Um, oftentimes when you change gears on the lathes, you might need to rotate the chuck by hand to make sure the gears are fully engaged. And then again on number 30, always stop the spindle when measuring or inspecting. And then disengage the automatic feed before stopping with the spindle. That's really important on the lathe, and I'll show you that when you, when we do the lathe demo. That's really key. Um, stop the machine before you brush it anyway it chips away. So oftentimes we'll be using a small chip brush or paint brush, and we'll be using this. We want to make sure the spindle's off so the brush doesn't get caught up between the workpiece and the cut. So 31, all initial setups must be checked by the instructor before any power is turned on. And I'll do that um, and check you out on each machine. But you can actually get this pretty much set up ready to cut. And then I'll come over and I'll check that your work holding is good, that your tool is good, your RPM is correct, and you, you understand which direction your cutter is going to rotate which direction you're going to feed, and then on the initial, on the very first um, time you're checked out, we're going to watch you um, do it and see if there's any corrections that might need to be made, and then after that you'll be checked on the machine and actually can continue machining without getting the, the setup checked. You'd be checked out on the machine, but in the, after that, if you had any questions about the setup, or you're just not sure, or you're um, not sure what I was asking, or um, questions about the assignment, you can certainly always ask me. Um, and then 32, do not attempt to stop machines by putting them into reverse. So you can do that both on the lays and the mill with this dial here. And I'll show you this when we get back to um, the mill demo. Um, so don't go from forward to reverse with this switch on the lathe from on the clutch lever 
we'll bring that up to rotate counterclockwise and then down would be um, clockwise, which we would normally not run clockwise on the lathe. And then <coughs> continuing on page three, <coughs> Do not operate any machine until instruction has been given regarding its use. The instructor, as checked, completed the initial setup for the following things. On the bandsaw, I'll be looking for the speed, the work holding, <clears throat> and the feed rate. On the drill press, the spindle speed, and make sure that the um, work holding is correct. On the milling machine, um, continuing on to page four. I'll be checking the cutter size, the rotation, the cutter rotation, and the mounting. And then separate from that is the feed direction and the direction of travel, as well as the work holding, making sure this is a good work holding setup. On the lathe, I'll, I'll be checking the compound position, the tool holder, the type and projection the tool bit cutting edge, the protrusion, the direction of travel, as well as the speed and the feed rate. So um, on the surface grinder, which we probably won't use, but it would be, I'd be checking the table travel, the wheel dressing, and then the work holding on that as well. But even, the, even though we won't use that, I will go through that machine for the safety test. Um, but let's go through the rest, the other machines now here. So the first one is the drill drill press, and for the drill press, we're actually probably won't be using this drill press, um, but it is on the safety test, and um, the mill, we're going to be using the mill like, just like a drill press for the drilling operations. Um, so on page four, starting, it says, do not leave the chuck wrench in the side of the chuck. And we've got chuck wrenches on the mills and the lays, as well as on this drill chuck here. And you can see the key is actually hanging in. I'm going to loosen this by hand. And what we don't want to do is leave it in here in the key slot like this. So it says here for B, we're going to store the drill chuck with the handle of the chuck wrench in like this, just kind of like a drill, just hand tight like that. Okay. Um, and you would always clean the tapers of the drill prior to installation. And you would seat the taper shank drills in a drill press um, with the wood block or a lead hammer. Now we are going to be using taper shank drill chucks on the lathe. And I have a sample of that I'm going to use here this drill and this has a this is not a straight shank here this is a taper shank and there's actually a little damage you can see this little line and it's got some damage in the middle of the taper um, so, but I'll use this one anyway and I'm going to use a this is a tapered adapter and this should fit in here if you can see the little tang on the end and there's another tang on the end here and on this adapter, I have a little window. And if I have my tang lined up with this, it will, it will seat. And i got to clean this off. It will seat accurately in this window. If you can, let's see if I can show you as it slides in this window. If I have it perpendicular this way, this will not seat in the taper. And on the lays, it's very similar. You just have to make sure the tailstock is um, brought out all the way. They're a little bit different on the lathes because they don't, they have, instead of using a drift, which I'm going to show you right now, there's on the tailstocks on the lathes, there's a little bar that comes in. And as you bring the tailstock back, the bar hits the end of the taper and, and knocks the, what would, would be the drill chuck off of the shank of the tool. And I'll do that in the demos in the lathe demo. So for this, I would seat this like this, and now I can, it's obviously held in there on the taper. And if I had a tapered drill chuck, which this one's actually not tapered, that one is actually, uh, that drill chuck is pressed in there. But if I had a tapered drill chuck, uh, or yeah, a tapered drill chuck, that's how I would load it. And then it says on there, um, 
So you would use a wood block or a, or a hammer, or a lead hammer on the tip, just very gently to seat it. Um, the taper, as long as they're clean though, they will seat pretty good. And in this case, the next one is I'm going to remove the taper drill by using the drift. This is the drift. And it actually, if you can see, it has a rounded end. And then this end on the bottom is flat. This end on the top is round. So I'm going to put the rounded end on the top of the window here. And the flat end will go along my um, the shank of my this this flat end here will hit the end end tang of the drill and I'm just going to use a piece of material on this and I'm just going to go tap this gently just so you see what this looks like just like this and that would release this taper from this in this case this is a tapered adapter okay so that will be the safety test um, on the to prevent damage on the straight shank drills and we're going to be using mostly straight straight shank drills in this class um, this is a straight shank drill and I think with this one you could probably see that this is a tapered shank drill um, so on the straight shank drills we want to make sure um, that we're checking the cutting lips here always check every tool you use but we're going to check to make sure this looks clean and sharp and it's ground evenly and then we're going to check that there's no damage on the shank here um, also make sure when you install this in the drill chuck that you're using a lot of hand pressure on here you don't have to torque a lot of your body weight but just make sure these are really tight in the drill chuck otherwise they'll spin in the drill chuck and cause an condition okay um, and then you always want to relieve the feed pressure and you'll feel it on especially on our first mill assignment we'll be drilling through and you'll feel it start to break through and just make sure when the drill breaks through that you're, you ease on off on the pressure so you don't drill back down through um, the work holding device and that's you know part of experience um, usually everyone's pretty good about that and you'll you'll get used to that as the semester progresses within the lab and then there's other issues with the drill press such as when you're cutting a thin material like sheet metal it's often sharp and oftentimes we'll need to clamp it to the table a lot of times with the larger pieces of material thick material we can actually just use what's called a drill vise which I have one down here and the pressure of the drill is enough to keep um, that work holding from moving. On the, on the mill, though, on the, both the conventional and the CNC, that work holding is really tight. So that's really not such a safety issue. Um, so you don't use a standard drill bias when cutting that thin material. Okay, now let's go back to um, the saws. So this right here is a uh, vertical um, vertical bandsaw. We'll be using this this semester. Um, and when you're using the power in the bandsaw, you always need to consider the type of material being cut, um, the, the material of the blade. So there's a principle that we're always going to be, our, our cutting blade is all is going to be as um, strong or stronger than the material we're cutting and then um, the speed at which the blade runs we need to make sure we have the correct RPM um, and then B the bottom of page 4 never adjust the upper blade guide height with the bandsaw blade running so this is the blade upper guide there's a lower guide here below the tape just below the table that we really don't move but this one we would unscrew the clamp and bring this up and down uh, and we would get this it will say there we get this um, very close to the top of the material but remember on this the bottom of page four any adjustment must be done prior to turning on the machine um, and, the, and this guide should be set 1 16th to 1 8th right here um, higher than the material so the material can clear through the back of the guide. 
And then on this one, as in any machine tool, sound is really important. You'll be able to hear it run. It'll run it in a very consistent sound. And then if there's an issue, you'll be able to notice that the sound has changed. And oftentimes, you can diagnose your issue based on the sound. Okay? So you often can hear that the blade is damaged and just stop the machine as soon as you hear something wrong. On this particular, on the vertical bandsaw, we don't push directly in the workpiece. I have this aluminum push plate here that we'll, we're going to square up our machine by hand holding it and then we'll eventually use this pusher aluminum push piece to cut through the material. Okay? Um, and on this one again, always have, you'll get checked out initially, I'll watch everyone do a setup, adjust it, um, and you'll show me what you're going to do and I'll watch you do it and then you'll be checked out and be able to use this machine. The same with the um, one of the first ma machines we're going to use here is our brand new horizontal um, bandsaw. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get to this actually the first day, the day we actually take the safety test. We're going to use this and cut both pieces of material for our first mill project and our first lathe project. Um, so it does have a, a, have a blade guide here. That's pretty easy to use. Uh, and you can kind of rotate this back and forth a little bit. It's a little sticky machine to kind of make sure it's all really loose. And then you can adjust this, but more than likely this won't need adjustment. Um, the thing with this one is we're gonna you know follow the directions it shows right here. I always use coolant. Um, and I'll have a video demo specific to this machine. Once you run this one, the, the because this will be the first one you run, um, the vertical will be re really easy. And depending on the project, when we go to use the vertical, I'll probably have a video demo for that as well. Okay, so on the pedestal grinder, this is another uh, machine tool that we, we probably won't use. The lathe students end up using this. And, um, but I will show you how to use this and you'll see me use it during our lab time. Um, towards the end of the semester when we do sharpen our tools, um, you know, I may take you through that demo, especially with, we might have a kind of a smaller class, so um, if we have time towards the end. On the pedestal grinder safety, that's what this is, this is a pedestal grinder. Um, safety glasses are not enough eye protection, so when you operate this, full face shields must be worn. So we, we go a little above and beyond. I think when you're in a machine shop, you're probably okay with the face, with the face shield and your safety glasses. Um, but for students, I always have them wear a full face shield when operating this machine. The work rest, and this has all the safety bells and whistles, all the safe, all the pedestal grinders, actually all the machines we have in the shop have all the safety features always employed on them. This is the work rest and this work rest should be kept, uh, let's see, 1 16th from the wheel at all times. Sometimes this often needs to be adjusted as the wheel gets gr ground down we want to move it closer in or if we replace the wheel this one is pretty small. I should probably replace this pretty soon. Um, so I would adjust this out to make sure it fits with the wheel. Um, so with this one, it should be a 16th from the wheel. Do not remove this. Advise me, the instructor, if this needs to be, the work rest needs to be adjusted or this needs to be dressed. Um, we have metal guards here covering the wheel. These are important because they protect you and others from a disintegrating wheel. They keep objects, including people, from touching the back of the wheel and they contain sparks and debris. So also on the middle of page five, use caution when you are operating and grinding with small objects. They become hot. I have a little dish here with water and I'm constantly dipping this and the operator should always be, you grind a little bit, you cool it down, 
so you can handle this um, with your hands um, and obviously without gloves as well. Um, do not use gloves, rags to hold any small part when grinding. Don't use pliers either. Um, and then on these pedestal grinders, and you can tell by the color of the wheel, um, but we only use um, ferrous metal, which is iron steel, on the pedestal grinders in this shop. I do have one that has a green wheel for carbide, um, but I don't have it set up right now because we kind of moved the shop around, so we don't really use carbide tooling in here, so I don't have a big need for that particular one. Um, but on the aluminum, I, we have students do this, they'll come in and they'll grind aluminum on this wheel, and it, the aluminum is so soft, it just melts into the wheel, and then I have to redress the wheel. So that's very, very important that we do not use aluminum on any of the pedestal grinders on this shop. Um, the best way to, to burr aluminum is just honestly with a file. There's a little sanding machine over there that I don't like to use. I think it's too aggressive. Um, and other shops will have like a deburring wheel that is it's made of a softer compound um, that you can deburr with. But I don't even use that in our shop because I want all of our finishes are going to be machine finishes. Um, and I'll show you how to do edge breaks on um, pretty much all the edges that we machine. Okay, so um, never use heavy pressure on the side of the wheel here. And also, it's a pretty common safety feature is when I turn this on, um, I'm never going to stand directly in line with this wheel. I'll stand to the side and turn this on just in case there's damage to this wheel it'll fly out in that direction and I'll be protected by the metal guard here. Okay, so lathe safety is next. So this is, uh, let's make sure I've got the headstock here. So the basic lathe safety on this is on the bottom of page five, I'm going to remove all jewelry rings, watches, prior to doing any, any work on this lathe. And I even take off my wedding ring. And I definitely never wear a watch because when this rotates, and even by hand, this one, it's in low gear now, so it's hard to rotate. But I've had my wedding ring caught a couple times, and that's when I'm like, nah, I'm going to just take that off. Um, you want to always secure any loose clothing. That's why we're going to have our aprons. Um, and don't have any necklace hanging off or long hair should be tied back. Page six. The chuck wrench. We've got a chuck wrench for each lathe here. And this, it only goes in four places. On the lathe tool rack where I grabbed it from. On the table under the tool rack. Occasionally we'll use that. I don't even leave it up here. That's not on the list, okay? So, um, in your hand, or in the chuck, with your hand, obviously, as you're tightening and loosening. So once I'm done with this chuck wrench, I'm going to put this actually back in the tool rack, okay? We have spring-loaded chuck, chuck wrenches. Some other shops, many shops, do not have that. So you could actually end up leaving this in the chuck. You go to turn on the machine, and that chuck wrench will go flying across the shop and possibly injure someone. So that's a very common safety feature or it's there's certain safety things within a machine shop. You know, always wear safety glasses. You never wear gloves operating a machine. Uh, you don't distract anyone when they're running a machine and you don't leave a chuck wrench in the chuck. That these are just basic safety principles that are, everyone knows not to do. Very important, okay? Um, the top of page six, the workpiece alignment. So you're gonna make sure the chuck wrench is securely attached here. The, this chuck keyhole attaches the material to the chuck, but on the left side is these, and these attach the chuck to the spindle nose. 
Um, so we're going to make sure that's securely attached. And I do that at the beginning of the semester, but I'll show you that in the lathe demo. Okay. Um, if you must change the chuck, we would put a piece of wood down here. We loosen up on this side, pull out the chuck, set it on the piece of wood and to make sure it doesn't damage the ways. So after you align your workpiece, you're going to bring the carriage all the way forward with your tool and you're going to rotate this one revolution to make sure you have clearance. So um, you do this to make sure you have clearance all the way around through the rotation. Um, and that's in the lathe demo. Now, you do not engage any lever on the lathe until you're sure in advance that you know exactly what will happen. So I've got, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. There's 23 levers on this machine. And by the end of the semester, you're going to know exactly what each one of those levers does. And actually, you will have used all 23 levers um, after spending a semester in the lab. So that's really important. Um, you do want to be certainly proactive. I mean, the, the, this class is operating the machines. So that means pulling, pushing, turning, adjusting all these levers. But make sure you understand, and you can certainly do that safely, understanding what each lever does before you turn it on. Okay? So the cutting tools always disengage the auto feed. Actually, let's go back up. When engaging the clutch lever, do not stand directly in line. And I think you can see this red lever here. This red lever is the clutch lever, and very similar to the pedestal grinder, I wouldn't stand in front of this lathe chuck. It's just kind of another basic safety principle that when I turn on a rotating tool, I want to make sure that I'm out of the way just in case there is some damage and it's not secured properly. Um, and then do not engage the clutch lever with a sharp sudden movement, just a firm gentle and we'll be, I'll be doing this in the demo, just bringing this up gently um, to engage the spindle. You must allow the spindle to come to a complete stop before adjusting RPM when changing gears. So now, if you look on the, again on the headstock here, so on the headstock we've got levers. You can see these are levers. And on this particular one, this is a dial. So this is, you can't see the top, but up here above on the headstock, on the E-lays, these are the 17-inch um, Acer E-lays, they call them. Um, we would be adjusting the gears here, actually high, medium, and low. And then this would be with the spindle off. And then for the dial, we'd have a range of RPM where we can adjust the dial. That would be done with the spindle running, okay? Okay, so um, always disengage the auto feed lever before turning off your spindle. That will be part of the lathe demo. And always get in the habit of removing all the cutting tools from the machine as soon as you have made the final cut with that tool. Okay, so that's really key. The filing and polishing, you know, I don't really do this on the lathe, but some people do. And um, for safety's sake, we wouldn't allow our arm or the file to contact the chuck or the workpiece. Um, and then if you do polish, don't wrap the emery, emery cloth all the way around the material. On this, in this class, I don't really do that. And I, I honestly don't do it in the shop that much. We're going to be doing machine surfaces. Um, occasionally I'll use a file on a lathe when, at, that's when it's set at a very, very low RPM. Um, and then of course don't lay any files along or any tooling along the ways here. We're going to protect these are precision ground and if we keep these clean the accuracy of our cuts are going to be good. So um, they're saying you know when you polish or, or file, we would want to cover the ways with some sort of a 
paper cloth or something. On to page seven, still continuing with the lathe. So for the chip removal, when they get tangled around the tool, you gotta stop the chuck and uh, use a hook or pliers. We don't have hooks in this shot. We don't really use them a whole lot. Um, and you can usually get away, there's a couple techniques I can show you where we can get a chip breaker and it doesn't bunch up too much, but if it does, stop the machine, bring the tool back and carefully remove them by hand, okay? Don't pull the chips um, with your, with loose chips with fingers, you know, like that. Just very gently kind of remove them. And then the top of page seven for the lathe shutdown. Always stop your lathe, your spindle, your chuck, right? When you go to get a tool or for any reason, never use your hand to stop the chuck by put, placing your hand on there, okay? It's not really gonna s save that much time. And then the, on the clutch lever here on the right, that if you go up, that is counterclockwise and that's the direction we'll be cutting. But you can go from that position all the way to neutral to down and that would reverse the direction of the spindle. We definitely don't want to do that on the lathe or on any machine. It's hard on the motor, okay? Do not perform any measuring operations with the micrometer and caliper until the lathe uh, chuck has come to a complete stop. And then also when you're adjusting the tool, um, some machinists will actually just bring the tool back with the spindle running. But for this class, we're gonna always defer to the safest possible scenario. And if you're gonna adjust your tool, let's stop the spindle just in case your tool slips or your hand slips, this is not rotating. That is the safest way to do things. Um, the same thing on the safety test. Keep in mind, it's not a trick test. It's just basic common sense. On the test, I would suggest you defer to the safest possible answer. I'm not trying to trick you into finding out if you're listening. If you just use basic common sense on the safety test, deferring to the safest possible answer, you'll pass the safety test. So that's what I, what I want to see. Um, I want to make sure you understand um, that it's just best to be safe. I mean, it's there's no reason not to. So let's go to the, on the milling machine here. And this would be one of the last machines that we'll talk about within the safety test. And this right here is the instructor one. So I'm gonna lean up a little so you can see more of the head here. So again, on the milling machine, always secure all loose clothing, long hair, must be tied back. And then you will receive specific instructions on each of these powered machines. Uh, but we're gonna be spending a lot of time on this and you know, you're gonna learn it and you're gonna be able to operate it. You might not be that comfortable with it after you've been checked out and that's, you know, normal, honestly. This is why we're here to learn and gain the experience on this machine. And then throughout the semester, I'll give you a little more concepts that you are a little easier to understand a little bit at a time, like in any course you would take. Um, so you gotta understand which direction a cutter tools must rotate. So we have the cutter rotation, which is with the cutter in the spindle here. So it'd be rotating. And then um, to run it backwards would ruin it. So we're always gonna go clockwise on this because we're gonna always be using right-handed tooling. Um, so to run it backwards could cost us some money and it's unsafe. And then the cutter rotation and the, then the feed direction is two different things. So I'm rotating my tool, but I'm fee also feeding my tool. Um, so it's very important that you understand that. Climb cutting is extremely dangerous. Um, and I have a video um, that I got off YouTube that I think is really good. It's another instructor, actually I might even have two up there. Um, where you'll understand that concept. But you're really, once you do the first cut, you're gonna really understand the cutter rotation and climb cutting versus conventional cutting. 
Um, that will be in the first project demo. Um, that actually will be the first thing you do on the mill. And then you'll, it might take you more than uh, a few times to really understand the concept, but you will be seeing that firsthand in your first cut. So it's unsafe to climb mill on a conventional mill, okay? Climb cutting is basically done on a machine that's designed for that, which is the CNC. And then damage due to climb cutting can be too expensive to cutters, workpiece, and it's not safe for the operators or those nearby. It, climb cutting does have advantages, and it produces a better finish, it's easier on cutters, and you can actually remove more metal per unit of time. So, um, but on the CNC, it's more rigid. There's the backlash is taken up, and there's, there's um, more rigidity to it, and that's why you're able to do it. When you are conventional milling as opposed to climb milling, the cutter rotation at the pointed direction is opposite the feed direction. So if we're rotating this way, I would be, if, I, if I'm rotating this, my cutter rotating clockwise and I'm moving towards the camera, my material's on this side, let's say this, this side, I would be climbing and if I rotate, if I, I keep the same rotation, but if I feed this direction, I would be climb, uh, conventional cutting. Uh, okay, page eight, the last page here. Do not engage any lever, knob, arm, handle, unless you know what will happen. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There's at least 28 levers or knobs on this machine. We're going to be using all of them except for this quill feed. This is for the advanced students, which is one, two, three of the knobs. That's it. Everything else you'll be learning and using in this class. And then clutches and feed control levers must be checked to see that they are in the neutral position. So there is, each one of our machines has power feed. And if you can, can hear this, I have the spindle on really high, and then I can engage the auto feed here. So this is the auto feed, if you can see the table moving. If I turn off my spindle, my table would still move. So this is really key on the mill, which is different from the lathe. On the mill, um, the table is not connected to the spindle rotation. On the lathe, the feed, which is the same as the table, is connected to the spindle rotation. So on the lathe, we are going to be using the auto feed. On the mill, we are not going to be using the auto feed. The advanced students are are supposed to use it though. We, we're probably, you know, if you ha you might see some advanced students in here, even though we we um, we only have one from last spring that may be in. So, um, but they're encouraged to use it. And towards the end of the semester, I'll show you how to use that. But that always needs to be disengaged. Very important. So, and then don't brush any object. Uh, with while the cutter is rotating, just either turn it off or wait for the end of the cut and then clean off your workpiece. Wait for the spindle to come to a complete stop prior to measuring or making adjustments. And then we're going to keep your finger away from rotating cutters, obviously, in front of you. Don't reach near it or past it to pick something up. Just stop the spindle if you need to get close to the cutter. Um, and then H, in the middle of page eight. Do not leave the spindle running when you're not right there. If I'm here and I'm making an adjustment, I need something from my workbench next to me, that's fine. If I'm gonna walk across and get a tool from the tool crib, then I'm gonna shut off my spindle. So that uh, will be on the test and it's really important. Again, default to the safest possible answer within the safety test, okay? 
And then um, don't shift into reverse, from forward to reverse. And then also, um, I'm gonna have a video demo. You'll do your setup to mimic my video demo on your first project. And I'm gonna, you're gonna need to be checked out on this machine by me. And I'll you know, ask you some questions. We'll see you make your first cut. And then you will be safe to operate the machine after that point. Okay, the, safe, the um, surface grinder, at the very end here, we do have a surface grinder. Um, and it's a great little machine. It's one of the first machines I ran as an operator when I was young and had just finished my um, education here. So this is our surface grinder. And I may or may not run this um, during our class. You may see this run. Even if you've operated this, do not operate this um, unless you've given specific instructions and I've checked you out on this machine. And then there's a little, there's a electronic uh, magnetic chuck here. And this is a piece of steel. It's another piece of steel. It's plugged in. If I turn this lever, it's kind of hard. If I turn this lever like this, this, I cannot remove this. Um, this is magnetically held to the chuck. So um, you always need to check that before you grind, before you start any part of this setup. Is that's what I would do is I would check to make sure that this is correct. Okay. Um, small work pieces don't have enough surface contact. So you oftentimes will use a stop block against the left side of the wheel. And um, the amount of contact between the workpiece and the chuck must be longer than the distance sticking up above the chuck surface. If it's shorter, it'll twist because there's not enough, again, not enough contact area. Um, and it's pretty, pretty easy to get around. If that's the case, we actually would put it in like a grinder, what's called a uh, precision tool room um, vice, a tool room vice sometimes, or a tool maker's vice, and that's ground flat on the bottom. And um, that usually is enough holding pressure to be able to grind it. And um, sometimes we'll use a stop lock again on the left side of the setup, and that um, adds rigidity to the setup and makes it safe. Okay, so you do not grind on the shoulder of any surface by using the side of the wheel. Some grinders have that option, and we can actually put a wheel on this one to do that, but all the wheels we have and use, we're only grinding on the bottom face here. Um, and then you don't, don't leave the, well, I've got table levers, so this table does auto feed, it'll, it'll auto feed this direction back and forth, and this direction side to side. Um, and it can kind of be set up to run basically, um, and of course you'd have supervision, it's not like a CNC machine, um, but it, the feed would be automatic in both directions. So that has to be fully disengaged um, before you move or stop the setup. You want to make sure that's completely disengaged on both sides. And then the last thing on this one is this wheel here, this adjusts the height of the wheel. If you have any issues, just a clockwise direction brings the head up on this surface grinder. So it's a really good machine, um, very accurate, and we can get closer tolerance um, dimensions on this because we can grind, grind those surfaces flatter with a better finish than with our end mills. So again, um, that's it for the, for the safety review. We'll be taking a safety test on our very first lab time, and then we'll be checking out on the horizontal saw, cutting your material, and I'll give you some other information during that time, and then the following week, we'll start cutting right away. We're going to be in on the, you'll either be on the mill or the lathe, and, and we'll get our lab, to, lab will be uh, run hopefully very efficiently. I'm looking forward to it. Again, on the safety test, um, bring a Scantron form. Um, actually, I think I'll just provide those this semester. 
um, I'll provide the Scantron form. You can bring some if you have them. <clears throat> and then um, default answers to the safest possible answer on the safety test. I'm not trying to trick you. I just want to make sure you understand the concept of safety and um, that we're going to, I'm not trying to trick you through the test or anything and fail you through the test. I just need you to demonstrate an understanding of safety principles.